Imagine a 22 ounce steak. This is the amount of muscle that the average man loses every single year after the age of 50. This loss of muscle mass with age is a problem, not because it makes it more difficult to get a six pack when you're 70, but because it's associated with multiple health problems like falls, fractures, and disability. Obesity is another major health problem facing older adults today. Obese older adults can reduce their risk of diseases like diabetes by losing body fat. One of the most effective ways to do this is by going on a reduced calorie diet. However, the problem with these traditional weight loss diets is that they result not only in the loss of fat, but also in the loss of muscle. Therefore, it's critical that we identify strategies to allow obese older adults to lose fat while preserving their important muscle. We know that consuming adequate amounts of protein foods like meat, fish, and eggs can help to preserve muscle during weight loss. But does it matter how that protein is spread out over the day? Most older adults eat protein in a skewed pattern, consuming small amounts at breakfast and lunch, and typically large protein servings at dinner. But would it be better if that protein was evenly spread across the meals of the day? Well, that's the question that I set out to answer in my PhD project. We provided 20 obese older men with a four-week reduced calorie diet and weightlifting training. For 10 of the men, the protein in the diet was evenly spread across breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And for the other 10 men, the protein was provided in that traditional skewed pattern. By taking tiny muscle samples from the participants' legs, we were able to measure their rate of muscle building before and after the four-week weight loss diet. We found that the weight loss diet suppressed the rates of muscle building in these older adults. This is a bad thing, as it likely explains why older adults are losing muscle as well as fat when they go on these weight loss diets. However, the really exciting finding was that when the older men consumed protein in an even pattern across the day, along with performing weightlifting training, then their rates of muscle building were actually rescued up to that higher level that was observed before they began the weight loss diet. However, the traditional skewed pattern of protein intake was far less effective, even when combined with the weightlifting training. So this indicates that the combined strategy of weightlifting training and an even pattern of protein intake may allow obese older adults to lose fat while preserving their precious muscle. So when my grandpa goes on a weight loss diet, I'll be advising him to hit the weights and evenly spread his protein over breakfast, lunch and dinner.